We are speaking today on the mind, the mind of Christ. And in today's world, there is a constant battle. And it's not on fought with guns and bombs only, but it's fought through technology, through the media. And the goal of that war is to control the mind of the individual. Uh, we are bombarded daily through electronic media, the printed media, uh, through all the various um, hypes and, and apps that there, that there are on, on the cellular, on the internet, and you name it. Uh, this has a purpose, and it has a plan. And that is to gain the attention and to eventually gain the control of our mind. The Bible says that the man thinks in his heart, so is he. And it says that how we spend our time allowing our minds to become um, affected or influenced by whatever medium would determine the type of people we would become eventually. And Jesus Christ came and he walked the earth. He lived as an example. And now he is saying, follow me. Follow my example. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And we may want to ask ourselves the question, what type of mind Jesus really had? And first and foremost, he had a song mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a song mind. He had a song mind. He knew who he was. The Bible said, who being in the form of God, and the word form here comes from a Greek word that speaks of morphe, and it means to be equivalent to, equal with. So it actually saying that Jesus Christ, who was actually God himself, he knew who he was. He had a song mind. And today, as we look at the Christianity, as we display through our lifestyle, we recognize that many of us are affected by our minds. Many of us lack the songness of mind. And I say that because of the way we are so easily swayed in our beliefs. As a matter of fact, to prove how we are so shady with our thoughts, there are some of us who would not even speak to a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> Why? Because we may have had an experience where they came and they were so forceful with what they believe, they left us in doubts as to what we ourselves really believe. So we avoid them you know it shouldn't be that way we should be able as believers as christians not just jehovah witnesses but anyone to be able to speak to them with a confidence and you say pastor that is a bible school students i didn't go to bible school no 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 you don't have to go to bible school or three years in in theology to be able to witness you just need to know the blind man didn't have a, a master's in theology when Jesus touched him. He said, I don't know all about this. All I know, I was blind and now I can see. And this is where it starts. It starts with the assurance of knowing in spite of what. There are a lot of things that you, will, you may never know in life. You may never know the whole, you may never read the whole Bible. But one thing that you need to know, you need to be songed in your mind. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. He was able to humble himself. And when we see about the humanity of Jesus Christ, we see that, listen, he never had a problem with self-esteem. The scribes and the Pharisees, they move around like 
peacocks in those days with their long white robes and and and, and they, 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 they they in orchestration and whenever they moved people would have recognized them when Jesus walked the earth he walked as a common man he walked with disciples and they who was very rugged and sometimes we have the perception or the under thinking that Jesus was you know this sanctified looking type of person you know with, with a, a halo over his head and a, and a cross his heart shining like a cross you know with a big light and all this but when you really traverse the the terrains of Israel when you go to Jerusalem and these places and you see how rugged it is, how rocky and how rough it is and how the sun could be very, very hot, you realize that he had a tan. <laughs> he had a tan. He must have had a tan because of that. And he moved with sanders and, and different things and you would realize that he was a really rough tough looking type of person and he is not the gentle Jesus meek and mild just looking upon this little child pitying our simplicity and suffering us to come to thee he had a song mind he knew who he was he was God but the Bible says that he did not count it robbery to be equal with God and sometimes as believers we allow ourselves to become distracted and our minds to, 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 to stray by not being songed in our mind. And we hear something today or tomorrow that derails us from what we really believe. And you know, to some of us, it's deja vu all over again ever so often. Am I really a believer? Am I really saved? You need to know that you know. The Bible says if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And that is the place to start with. There are, some, there are people that are going to church for so many years. And even in, in Pentecostalism. And they are not certain. They say only God knows. You know, so they're living in limbo. And they're hoping that their, their deeds or different thing, good things that they do would, make, would suffice it. The Bible says that by your faith you shall live. They that believe in the Lord shall not be put to shame. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And it starts with a belief. I know that I know that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved, that I'm a believer, that I belong to Jesus, that his, his work here on earth culminated every provision that is necessary to ensure my salvation. And now simply all that I have to do is to accept it. Accept it. He had a song mind. He knew who he was. He was God. Not for a moment to be equal with God would have been robbing God. But he humbled himself. And we see here not only a song mind he had, but he had a single mind. And we need to have single mind. The apostle Paul said, this one thing I do. This one thing I do, I forget the things which are behind me and I press towards the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. We have too much thoughts. We are not single in our mind. And sometimes it affects us even in our relationships, not just with, with God, but our relationships with each other. And I thank God my wife and I, we have been married for 32 years, 33 years this year. And uh, the truth is, have you ever seen uh, beautiful people? Yes, Trinidad is full of beautiful people. But at the end of the day, I know this was my choice. And I, I stay single in my focus, in my relationship, and my commitment. 
And sometimes we are affected in these areas. There are some people, even as believers, we cannot even keep our eyes and our head. And some young men, even elder men, their eyes would want to fall out following the ladies and vice versa. But Jesus had a single mind. He had a purpose. And not for one moment did he stray from it. He's, he kept focus. They tried to give him another assignment on earth. Jesus came with an assignment from heaven. And they tried to give him an assignment on earth. The assignment on earth that they tried to give him was to make him a king. <laughs> Could you imagine the king of kings? And the Lord of Lords come into earth and people misunderstand him and say, I want to make you a king. I'm saying that to say that sometimes we, we forget who we are and we allow people to, de to de derail us by even trying to give us position that we know that will cause us to compromise who we really are as believers and they tried to make him an earthly king, and they said, be our king so that we can have representation. We would make you the one in charge, and you would realize that it, even in, as human beings, what we were really trying to do is replicate the temptation that Satan had for Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, when they took him, when Satan took him, in, and he went after fasted for 40 days, and he took him into the desert place and said, all these things would I give you. It belongs to him. He don't need anything. And sometimes even in our giving, sometimes even in our faithfulness to God, we try to, Say, well, God, I would give you this if you give me that. And listen, it, all, it belongs to him. He said, give it, give it. Be faithful. Be faithful. He had a single mind. He said that we need to be mindful of these things also. Let this mind be in you, which was in him. He found to be equal with God, not something as to be stealing, but he humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. He condescended from God to man. And if, that, if you think that that was enough, to servant. And he said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. And Peter and they had a problem with him. Because he attempted to wash their feet. He attempted to serve them. And he said the Gentiles philosophy is that he that is greatest sits at the head. And sometimes that is how we live as Christians. We want to be served. We want to be recognized. We want to be acknowledged as the top dog in the pepper sauce. But we don't want to humble ourselves and serve humanity. And the, the mind of Christ is a mind that would disbar all the temptations to become famous and be served. And said we can become famous by serving. He said it would not be so. He that is Great among you must become servant. And he that is the chief must become servant of all. And we must learn how to serve our fellow men. We must learn how to serve believers. The mind of Christ is one that would encourage us to portray the characteristics of who Jesus is. And for too long, you know, I'm tired of hearing at the phrase from other people, if she or if he is Christian, I don't want nothing to do with Christ. Don't you know that you are an ambassador? You are an, an ambassador. 
And as an ambassador, you represent the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. You represent the king of kings. And your representation tell others as to the delight or the disgrace of that kingdom. And as believers, we must endeavor, do your best to make sure that your representation of the kingdom of God is always one that is sound, one that is single in your purpose, one that is single in your deliberation and in your conviction as I am a Christian. Joseph had an opportunity to, to, to rule over Potiphar's house. And not just Potiphar's house, but to rule over Potiphar himself. Because had he conquered Potiphar's wife, he would have been in control of Potiphar. But he said, how can I do this thing and sin against God? How can I do this thing and bring misrepresentation to the kingdom? How can I say this thing? How can I identify with this thing? And yet still be able to identify with the kingdom of God. Jesus is our example. He set the pattern and he did it perfected. He perfected it and he said, have a single mind. Know who you are. Know what you have to do. And do it with grace. And not only that he had a song mind and a single mind, but he also had a safe and secure mind. The Bible says he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. He had that servitude heart. He had the mind of a servant. And the mind of a servant in those days it was one that they knew that they were not owned by themselves. They belonged to their masters. And I look around, and in spite of the differences in the faces, if we would check our ancestral history, all of us in some way had some connection with being slaves from our four parents. In some way, we belong to our masters then. But I thank God that we change masters now. And now we belong to the king of kings, the lord of lords. And the, the, the great thing about him that he is a master that will not in any way advantage us. He will not use us and abuse us. He will not ridicule us. As a matter of fact, that is one master as a servant you sit at his table. You dine with him. And this is what we must have the heart of a servant to be able to serve others, to be able to reach out, to also know that we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to him. And it is not our will, not our own desire. Not what we think. We want to do as we ought, as we please. It is not so in Christianity. And Christianity is not what pleases me, but what pleases God. Lord, are you pleased? Listen, you want to have a mirror? Let the mirror be the word of God. You're putting on something, Lord, are you pleased how I'm looking? Am I representing you this morning? Oh, am I representing somebody else? Would, would my outfit be a distraction or a deterrent? Or would it be something where people can see, yes, here goes a person. I, I admire the way that that person looks. Something about that person that really affects me. The aura that when he or she comes in the room, when their presence is here, it's very, 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 it's something that I cannot, I cannot avoid. And uh, the Philippian jailer, when they saw Paul and they, the aroma that they had, even in the midst of bondage, he exclaimed to them, what must I do to become a Christian? Have you ever had that experience? Is there anyone that is admiring your life to the extent that they want to serve your God? Or are they admiring your life because they want to conquer you or they want to destroy you? He had the heart of a servant. He humbled himself.
He made himself of no reputation and took upon him that servant heart. And he, hum he became obedient, obedient even to death. And because of that, the Bible says that God has highly exalted him. Many of us, we love to be promoted. And the truth is, we would do every conceivable thing that we know in order to um, be promoted, in order to entice or suffice uh, our managers or earthly leaders in order to be promoted. But in the kingdom of God, promotion, the Bible says, come not from the east nor the west, but it comes from the Lord. Amen. Promotion comes from the Lord. As we have our mind, as we have our song mind, a single mind, one that is sure and secure in the form of a servant, willing and ready to avail ourselves. You know, there's a portion of scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 from the 11th to the 16th verse. And it's a portion of scripture that we tend to abuse from time to time. And when he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. He gave some to become apostles and prophets and, and, and pastors and teachers and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints. So we believe that those offices are there to perfect the saints. But going beyond that is for the saints to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is not just done by the pastors. The pastors and teachers and prophets and evangelists, they equip the saints. They equip us. They equip you and I. So wherever you are, you can do the work of the ministry. Wherever you are is your Jerusalem. There are people all around us that are dying and going to hell. A Christless eternity. And we have become so immune to, this, to these things that as a matter of sometimes we say, well, praise God. She gone or he gone. It should not be like that. A soul is so precious and so costly in the eyes of God that if it was just one person, if only you existed on earth, Jesus would have still come and fulfilled his purpose. Isn't that wonderful today? Recognizing how important that you are to God should also cause you to recognize how important the other person is to him also. And we must be able to serve humanity. Let us let them know how, how important we are by the service we render. Let them know how, how, how gracious we are by the, the aptitude that we have to be able to serve people. And Jesus, he displayed that. He displayed it and we must follow his examples. Um, quickly, I see time has expired. And I know very shortly, if not, that um, some of you are um, already tuned into another station. But just give me uh, just a couple more minutes. I just want to leave with you just a couple more scriptures as to follow the examples. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, uh, we have those examples. Finally, brethren, and this is... The crunch. This is how to help us to condition our minds. We have to learn how to recondition our minds so that we can get the mind of Christ. We can operate in the mind of Christ. And the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 4, he was saying, last, lastly, finally. And he was not saying it as how we preachers say because when we say final, we have to say last, and then we say we're closing, and then we say as we conclude. But he was saying, lastly, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things, as I uh, really, really sorry, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are up honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are, you know, are lovely, whatsoever things are good, are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if you find, hallelujah, any, 
there be any praise in it. Think on these things. We need to recondition our minds by thinking on the things that are pure. Thinking about truth. Thinking about honesty. Thinking about justice. Thinking about purity. Thinking about loveliness. Thinking about the good report. Things that are of a good report. We are living in a time today when we need to challenge ourselves to rethink how we operate as believers and we can only do that when we have the, the aid, the assistance of the Holy Spirit to help us. So we can arise every morning, we can wake up and ask the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, touch my mind. My mind, my soul belongs to you. The gateway to my, to my being, the understanding, my intellect, my understanding, my, 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 the ability to learn. Help me, Lord, to be able to have a song mind. Help me to be able to have a single mind. Help me to be able to have a sure mind. Help me to be able to have a sober mind. Help me to be able to have a servanthood mind. A, a mind that would serve your people. Lord, I ask you this morning to renew my mind. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Help me to embrace the new. Help me not to dwell on the past. This one thing I do. Help me to do this one thing every day Lord to forget the things which are behind me to leave the baggages to leave all the heavy laden to leave it at the feet of Jesus and to press forward to press forward to the mark to the calling of the high calling in Christ Jesus Lord I want to be able to serve you today in purity I want to be able to serve you in truthfulness I want to be able to serve you in honesty help my mind touch my mind hallelujah lord the battle is in the mind and if i lost the battle in my mind i would lose the battle in my entire being help me this morning to be victorious i want to ask you to stand right where you are this morning hallelujah 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 jesus hallelujah lord hallelujah renew a right spirit within me lord jesus for i know lord god the thoughts that you have for me